Do you want to get your island to a 3 star island rating? Or maybe you want to unlock terraforming in the fastest way possible. In this video, I'm going to show you the 5 step process for getting your island to a 3 star rating and we're getting started right now. So as you start the game, your island will be barren and you'll be living in a small yellow tent. Tom Nook will give you several different types of missions to complete which ultimately helps you progress through the game. Some of the missions include recruiting more villagers, upgrading your resident services tent into an actual building, and crafting DIY items to place throughout your island. In the end, there's a set amount of missions and things you must do to reach a 3 star island rating. So first, let me give you a little bit of a background on how the scoring system works for your island star rating. Behind the scenes, it's a point based system. There are two main categories on which your island is rated, and it's judged by looking at the scenery of your island and also by looking at the building development of your island. The scenery is basically all of the plant life such as flowers and trees, but it also includes DIY furniture. The development aspect are things such as nooks cranny, the museum, bridges and inclines. Your final island rating is determined by calculating how many points each item is worth and then adding them all up. And then whichever category whether it be scenery or development, whichever one has the lowest points, it's used to determine your island star rating. Now as you can see from this chart, you're going to need at least 160 points for development and about 270 points for scenery just to get to a 3 star island rating. Guys, if you're finding value from this video, then be sure to hit the like button. The way the game is designed, you essentially need to do a little bit of everything in order to get your island star rating to increase to 3 stars. In this next section, I'm going to cover them all. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is unlock island evaluations. First, you'll want to upgrade your resident services tent into its own brick and mortar building. This is its own unique mission and you'll have to pay off your debt that you owe to Tom Nook for the deserted island getaway package that he keeps talking about. This is easy enough and it can be completed by performing various tasks around your island. Keep checking back with Tom Nook on the next steps if you get stuck here. Next up, you'll need to build the infamous Nook's Cranny. After you've paid off your debt for the deserted island package, you can ask about upgrading your tent into a house. Then, once your home is finally built, which takes about a day, you'll be able to talk to Timmy about opening a store. After collecting resources for the new building, Timmy will give you the building plot for Nook's Cranny. Once you place it down, you'll have to wait about a day before it's built. Unless, of course, you're time traveling. If you need help there, then check out this video here. Next on the list is building a bridge and three houses for some new villagers. Once Nook's Cranny is finished, you can speak to Tom Nook about the bridge and additional housing plots for the new villagers. He'll want you to finish building the bridge first and then he'll offer the housing plots for your new villagers. So it is going to take a little bit of time for you to build the three houses for the three new villagers that's arriving on your island. Tom Nook will ask you to place the housing plots and then provide interior and exterior furniture for each house. And as you provide all the items for each house, then you can take a trip to the Mystery Island to recruit more villagers. I've actually got another video on that process, so feel free to check it out, and the links are in the description. As a matter of fact, leave me a comment below and let me know who were your first two villagers. I'd love to know if anyone started the game with Raymond or one of the more popular villagers. So once the villagers are all moved in, Tom Nook will announce that the resident services building is undergoing some upgrades and it'll be unavailable for a day while the construction is being performed. When it opens again, a few things will happen. Isabel finally arrives and Tom Nook gives you a building plot for the campground which ultimately unlocks the ability to ask Isabel about your island star rating. So now, you have just unlocked island evaluations. Yeah. But this is just the beginning of your journey to a 3 star island rating. Up next are more steps on what you need to do to get your island star rating from 1 star to 3 stars. Believe it or not, you will need to have a total of 8 or more villagers living on your island before you can even get to a level 2 star rating. And so that's one of the first things that I recommend you do is to recruit at least 8 villagers on your island. The reason that this is important is because as Isabel reviews your island, your rating is dependent on how many villagers you have in total. Luckily, adding more villagers is really easy to do. Once you place your campsite down and it's been completely built, a villager will arrive the next day or so. 
This villager will ultimately decide to move into the island, and you don't have the option to turn them down. However, once the campsite villager has moved in, you'll be able to speak with Tom Nook about adding more housing plots to your island. And then once the housing plot has been placed on your island, you can now have the freedom of traveling to mystery islands to recruit more villagers. However, if you don't fill the housing plot with a villager of your choice, Tom Nook will fill the open house plot himself with a random villager the next day. And then once your island has at least 8 villagers, you can proceed to the next step. Here's a quick tip. Speaking with Isabel will give you tips on making your island better. Adding additional bridges and inclines is an easy but expensive way to boost your island star rating. And as a matter of fact, bridges and inclines provide one of the biggest boosts to your island star rating. So take a look at this chart on screen and I'll give you an example. So once Nook's Cranny is built, you'll receive 15 points, but for a bridge, it's the number of bridges times 15. So as you can imagine, once you place two, three, four different bridges down, you'll have a lot of points being added to the development category. Also, I do realize that bridges and inclines require a ton of bells, and especially in the beginning of the game, you don't have a lot of extra. If you need help obtaining more bells, then check out this video where I explain everything you need to know about the turnip exchange. I'll put those links in the description. Another great way to increase your island star rating is to build fences. Tom Nook will enable the use of fences on your island. You can add additional fencing designs by shopping at the resident services terminal. Once you have collected the supplies needed for your fence DIY recipe, you'll have built 10 of that particular fence to spread around your island. And this topic kind of segues into the last part of the video where I talk about why fences are so important for boosting your island star rating, so stay tuned. Flowers can be an easy and very cost effective way to boost your island star rating. The flowers will start to clone and cross pollinate before you know it, and your island will be full of flowers. Now it can be a bit messy, but as for your island star rating, each fully grown flower counts as one point towards your total star rating value. In addition to receiving a single point for every adult flower, you'll also receive a single point for any adult tree. More on that point system in the next section. Just as a quick tip, you can get more flowers from Nook's Cranny. You can also get them by traveling to Friends Islands or by gathering them from Mystery Island Tours. Having various types of flowers isn't necessarily important, but the amount of flowers is what will help your island star rating. Weeds have a negative impact on your island star rating, so getting rid of all of the weeds can really help you get to your end goal. Next we're going to focus on displaying many different types of items throughout your island. Having a variety of DIY items is the mission. Some furniture will count as the same type, but having different colors or styles will be considered a unique piece. And by the way, the type of furniture is a category such as chairs or tables. So for example, placing down a wood chair and office chair would count as one type, but since they look different, they're considered to be two unique pieces. Having more unique items on your island results in more bonus points going towards your island star rating. You'll receive many different DIY recipes from Tom Nook, the floating balloons, message bottles found on the beach, or by purchasing them from the resident services terminal. You can also purchase items that are non-DIY, such as a street lamp, and it can be used to help boost your island star rating as well. Additionally, placing expensive furniture outdoors can give you a 2x on your points for that unique item. So based on the amount of points you get from each unique DIY furniture item, and from all the points that you get from everything that we've covered in this video, you're probably going to need right around 25 furniture pieces displayed throughout your island. I want to give a very special thank you to this channel's newest Patreon supporter. And don't forget to come hang with us in the Animal Crossing community over on our Discord server. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Hey guys, if you found this video helpful, then please hit the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Also check out one of these other how-to videos that I know will help you out.